Hey there, Algae Talkers. Welcome to another Algae News. I'm Jack, and this is our summer special. And of course, if it's uh, it's great to go down to the beach during this time, so that's what I got going here. Just came down. Let's get rid of this stuff a little bit. Now, right? So we're going to talk about going down to the beaches, and of course, going down to the beaches. One of the major problems we all know is, as phycologists, algae enthusiasts, algal blooms. Algal blooms are a kind of a uh, bit of a problem out there now, as we can sort of uh, see from, you know, pictures and around the area it can really ruin a vacation if this is the beach that you want to be on and it's kind of yucky and also it can be kind of bad for you. So we're going to go and talk about during the summer because it's just the beginning of summertime. We're going to talk about algal blooms and I just want to go over a little bit about um, algal blooms and it's summer and that means that the, it's time for the algae are in bloom. Now of course we're going to be talking about sort of the upper hemisphere where this is our, our summertime so it's, uh, it's hot um, and algae blooms are actually a very natural thing. Um, they grow to certain sizes, These uh, there's sargassum for instance, um, also cyanobacteria, they, they actually have a natural part of the ecosystem that is very important and when it gets disrupted it will grow to much larger amounts and it can kill off a lot of wildlife, um, it can be very toxic, um, we're going to be going um, and just one of the points is that it's increasing around the world. We see more and more because of climate change and global warming and the oceans are, are warming. It's one of the reasons is that um, because of that, we're, we're seeing increasing of algae blooms around the world. And these can be toxic. They can be harmful. Um, just in general, when you get too large of an algae uh, bloom, it could suck up the oxygen and there's no oxygen for the, the fish and, and all the wildlife that, that need water. It's not just in the oceans, it's also in the rivers and lakes, um, fresh water and salt water everywhere. And they can be toxic, very toxic. And um, it can kill off dogs, we'll, we'll, we'll see that in a little bit. And the data has shown here, you can see here, um, there's some of the graphs, you can see an increase of algal blooms is associated with an increase of phosphates and nitrogen concentrations have increased in the oceans. As we see that, we see algal blooms increasing because of that. So it has a lot to do, uh, a lot of it's caused by man and how we do agriculture and it can affect, they could be, it can go from cyanobacteria, micro, macro, seaweeds. Um, it can affect a lot of, of areas. Um, and sadly, this is what a, a lot of people see around the world for the first time, if they're aware of algae at all, um, is either in their pools or aquariums, but a lot of people don't have those. A lot of people do use the beaches. So this can affect everyone uh, extremely, and everybody just sees that algae is this harmful thing that's ruining my vacation, what am I gonna do? Um, and these are all actually from recently, from the beginning of this summer, June 3rd, June 4th. Um, a lot of them are, are quite recent. Um, you can see that, they, that the harmful algae blooms, they're increasing in Europe and in the Americas. Austin, it's killing dogs, you can see right here. Um, and, and they're trying new tactics, trying to figure out what exactly can we do about these algal blooms. Uh, it's, it's increasing, you can see here, we're going to talk about this in a little bit, this article. Um, and you can see it closes off beaches, they have to close off all the beaches in the area. So during the summer, if you're, this is your free time to be able to go down to the beach and now algae has ruined it for you. We also have the concept of invasive species that are also problematic, that are entering, uh, you know, Japanese seaweeds are entering into uh, uh, Mediterranean areas. There, there's a lot of problems with, with algae and, and even just how global it is. This actually is a picture, not of the Caribbean, but of uh, Scotland. And it's an algae bloom and the algae bloom has a, a sort of a turquoise color to it that kind of makes it look like the Caribbean, but it's Scotland, which uh, that should not be happening. 
Um, so talking about um, harsh algal blooms, and you can see around the world, um, we're going to concentrate on the United States right now. So we're going to look into the United States and we're going to do sort of a harmful algal bloom weather report um, sort of thing. Um, basically a lot of, of phosphates and nitrates in the water. You can see uh, you can see these kinds of areas that would have high agriculture like Florida. Um, just a lot of runoff uh, uh, starts to make these uh, start to bloom a lot more um, around this area, around the Caribbean. Uh, um, like I said, it ruins a lot of people's vacations. And um, so as of right now, we're even seeing now um, in the Wisconsin area here, you can see this, this sort of area, I think they mean the Lake Superior area, and this is having, they have to shut down the beaches there. And, um, and you know, these are cold areas. They shouldn't be having huge algal blooms uh, uh, like they are. Uh, Florida, okay, we understand that they're, right now they're halting harvesting uh, uh, shellfish in Florida because of the runoff. All in this area, they, they, you know, this is where your shrimp and crab and, and stuff comes from. Um, and, uh, and so they have to shut it down. So it's costing a lot of people money. And one of the reasons is because Florida and this whole area, a lot of the agriculture, and they use phosphates and nitrates to increase uh, yield when you're harvesting. So down here in Florida, you can see here, and, and down the Mississippi, coming over here, but also in, in you know, blooms in Oregon. Um, now, because they're blooming in the water, uh, in like the lakes and things like that, um, they're having a border dispute with California about water usage because they're having major droughts and this is only increasing the problem. Um, the only sort of bit of good news is that surprisingly Lake Erie area right here um, is actually seeing a, a less of an algal bloom than it usually does and they're saying that's because of there's lower amounts of rain so that maybe you know there's a lot of algae and rain also it's sort of everywhere um so there there is that problem so looking at that area lake erie area you can go and uh and actually go to the beaches for for now uh we'll see about next summer or later on this summer and a, a growing problem is uh the health research is is, is looking is basically seeing harmful algal blooms around the world are creating chronic health conditions in people um, from the cyanobacteria microcystin um, right here if you can see right here microcystin oh it's a little bit I, I hopefully you guys can see that um, right here and so it's actually in, it could cause cancer they're having seeing liver failure um, and this is also uh, the the sort of uh, um, nomenclature of how to actually say it in the in the world of algal blooms is harmful algal blooms HABs so uh, like I said algae can actually bloom and be natural and when they get too big and too toxic this is when they become HABs or also TABs toxic algal, bloom, algal blooms and so a lot of people are asking what what can we do about this so I don't like to bring doom and gloom and everything's horrible we have to, you know, like Alga Talk is trying to do, we're going to have to try to work on this together around the world. So um, basically, we are going to look into a company that is creating a shoe using these algae blooms and they're harvesting the stuff for biomass and material and using it as a polymer. They also add in other things. And uh, let's look at the video that the campaign that this shoe is trying to, to put together to, to try to bring awareness to algal blooms uh, around the world. Our planet's waterways are in danger. Flooded with excess fertilizers, pesticides and toxic waste. The culprit, industrial activity, intensive agriculture and a warming planet. These practices are creating dangerous imbalance in water ecosystems and are triggering the explosion of algal blooms. These blooms can rapidly form dead zones, killing aquatic life and disrupting local communities. Algae blooms have already damaged entire ecosystems, including UNESCO World Heritage Sites like Zion National Park in North America, the Lake District in the UK, South America's Lake Titicaca, even the Earth's oldest and deepest Lake Baikal in Siberia. 
Polluting our drinking water and jeopardizing marine ecosystems is a threat to all life on the planet. Join us. Sign our open letter asking UNESCO to work with local governments to stop destructive practices and implement regenerative solutions. Together, we can make our waterways breathe again. Sign our letter at theoxygenproject.com slash H-A-D-S. So as we can see, basically, the, this company is trying to use their shoe, their, you know, their commercial company um, called uh, Vivo Barefoot, right here. And uh, they're a UK-based uh, um, footwear company, and they do other things uh, as well uh, as this algae shoe. Um, and they've been working on using algal blooms and shoes um, with an actual company called uh, Bloom. Right here um, with the uh, Algix brand um, and a cool name and uh, so they're using the the biomass is actually made by Bloom with the uh, Algix sort of both <laughs> together as the same company um, and they're giving it to uh, basically this Vivo Barefoot Ultra 3 Bloom and the idea is, is to try to, like I said, bring awareness about algal blooms, as you can see in the video. Um, there's articles being written about them, this on uh, June 14th. Um, and basically, uh, we're, we're going to, you know, uh, they're, they're trying to, to bring awareness through this Stop Harmful Algae Blooms campaign. Now, um, to, they're, like I said, trying to encourage um, people to, you know, the governments to, to get around and start doing something. And they have uh, ten, over 10,000 signatures so far. And we're actually going to put a link at the bottom of, uh, in the, in the uh, description area of this video. Um, so we've already clicked on it and uh, we suggest that you guys do the same. Um, so there are some answers. Uh, there's also, you know, just gathering this stuff, using it for biofuel, using it uh, uh, in different ways uh, around the world, especially in the Caribbean. These poor areas are trying to figure out what they can do with basically huge amounts of sargassum that is floating onto these beaches. So they need to figure out, they need to get rid of it. They need to figure out what to do with it. Um, and these are major issues that, uh, you know, once again, it's, it's you know, it's, global warming that we actually have to fix the underlying issue but uh as we keep going forward we have to find uh new ways to do this so hey fans, um, this, is the, this the, is the ultra three blue from so the this Ultra. is the the shoe you can see it looks like a normal nice shoe you can go out if you want to actually go out as a psychologist and look look for uh, algae to imitate running like, it's a good area to you know foot. It does feature Good exercise shoe. the entire shoe itself. It's got perforations as well, so it's very breathable. I love that they do have a bungee lacing system here, so it's quick and easy to throw on, very comfortable, provides a secure fit, soft foam on the tongue itself, and it's all on top of this unique footbed. It's gonna be very thin, but still protect the foot itself, nice flexible design, and of course, a hex flex hexagonal pattern outsole to keep you stable on a variety of surfaces. Take your barefoot running to the next level with Vivo Barefoot. Pick them up today. All right, so uh, as you actually can go, you'll uh, see the link at the bottom. You can sign the, uh, the, the petition to UNESCO to try to help them uh, uh, to show to the government that this is an issue that people actually care about. Um, and, uh, and also at the same time, in that link, you can look at the shoe itself and, and maybe buy, buy a pair. Um, so I just want to show a little bit here. Um, this is kind of what it looks like. You see people on vacation, um, they're enjoying themselves and here's all this uh, algae that sort of comes up on the thing and they have to uh, remove it. And basically they're just collecting it, trying to get it off the beaches um, because the real reason that the beaches are there for tourists and that's how they make their money. Um, is people from around the world on summer vacation go into these places. And so this is a major problem, and they're busy collecting it. They have to figure out what to do with it. And um, you know, as we keep going this summer, we'll, we'll uh, we're I don't think this is going to be the last time we talk about uh, algal blooms uh, and and what the possibilities of the future are with that. And talking about 
summer vacation and algae in maybe a, a positive way, uh, we're going to talk about the Akua Kelp Burger, you can see here. Um, and it is uh, perfect for the summer, perfect for people, you know, vegans. People already know that kelp, uh, I'm sure if you're watching this, you know kelp is a zero input crop. Um, which is better for the environment. It's it, it's sustainable. Um, we can keep you know uh, uh, you know keep growing more kelp. Um, and this New York-based company um, is of course launching the world's this is the world's first kelp burger, um, which I would love to try. And um, so just talking a little bit about it. Um, very interesting and like um, they have some ideas for recipes that the, the actual patties will come to you um, the frozen patties it'll be a compost a compo compostable packaging um, so you can put it in your compost and um, so also you can use this kelp burger you can break it apart you can use it any way you want you know you don't have to just make a burger you can make a nice bolognese or make them into sort of uh, falafel balls maybe fry them a bit um, and they're blended with mushrooms and pea protein and black beans and quinoa and crushed tomatoes. So, it, you know, it gives it, it's not just kelp. It's, it's flavored so that, you know, people that, that want to eat something that's sort of protein based and has the texture of burger and has the sort of consistency of meat um, can, can get this. And I think having a kelp burger on the beach sounds like a great idea. Um, the Kua company, we actually interviewed them, Alga Talk, uh, did, if you actually check a video before this one, um, you'll see this, it's Kelp Jerky, we did a podcast uh, with them talking about their new Kelp Jerky that they were coming out, the different flavors that they had, um, this also would be a great snack um, if on a hike in, in the summer, or just on the beach of course, but anywhere, any outdoor activity. Just throw this in your bag and you got some good protein and, and kelp and we already know all the benefits of kelp the the vitamins that you can get and of course it would give you you know a lot of energy to to keep going on that hike or uh, or whatever vacation activity you want to be doing um and on the next thing we're going to talk about is a segment that we actually uh do on uh our facebook page called Pioneers of Phycology. Um, I found this uh, sort of amusing, this I was looking into uh, cryptogam and how uh, cryptogam is the study of non-seed bearing plants. Uh, so uh, algae is one, mosses, ferns, uh, mushrooms if I'm not mistaken. Um, and a lot of people sort of, uh, this is something that's well done, you know, well known and, and done a lot. Um, he, this man, um, Jeffrey, uh, Tandy, um, actually, uh, it's an interesting story and I thought it was going to be one of our FICO fun moments, but the more I looked into it, um, I thought about putting it, want to do like the pioneer of phycology segment or, or of the month or, or something like that. And so this guy was just an interesting story that I thought was very funny. Um, this is, of course, Jeffrey Tandy. Um, this is not him working with algae. Um, he's in the Red Sea, if I'm not mistaken, and he's trying to keep cool. And I think he's trying to figure out like a new sort of fabric that would keep him cool or, or the people that were with him also uh, there. Um, behind it in the area you could see uh, this is the Natural History Museum in London and so the interesting story about Jeffrey Tandy is that uh, he's a cryptogamist who became a cryptogramist. So a cryptogramist is someone who actually decodes and so during the war they had uh, an Enigma machine which is this the Nazis had a code machine uh, maybe some people have seen the the movie with uh, uh, you know trying to break the code and everything forget the the name uh, but uh, Alan Turing is is the main character um, and so they're cracking the code to try to beat the Nazis and this wasn't just Alan Turing this was a lot of people um, there was a whole uh, facility uh, with these people inside of it um, and so they I, they got this guy so the joke sort of went that it was a typo 
that they were actually looking for a cryptogrammist and they actually got a cryptogamist. And the, 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 the thing is very, it's very funny. We, we know for 100% for talking about this story a little bit, we're not too sure if 100% of this is, is fully there. The story goes is, is that, is that he, was, he, was, he was definitely there, um, but that the story is, is that they got it wrong. But actually looking more into it, the, the actual thing that he had to, to uh, work you know, with, with, well, the actual job that he had in the Natural History Museum was archiving, uh, he was part of the Cryptogamist department, so he was archiving a lot of specimens and things like that. So he was very knowledgeable about um, how, how, you know, how to organize things. And this was the first time uh, cryptogrammist, you know, decoding was the first time this was really ever done in this huge way. Um, and, uh, and so along the line, they, they picked him. And it seems like maybe more because of his actual educational background and his job, they thought he would be a good fit. I mean, they were looking for everybody. So they were taking experts from all types of different areas. And he definitely was, he definitely worked there. Um, his code name was Six. Um, and everybody, it was very secretive. I don't think even some people knew in the departments who were what and what was, who was working on what. And so the story goes, uh, really, not the story about the typo, but what the real work that he did is that uh, because of his knowledge of algae and understanding um, how to take specimens, how to separate specimens, how to clean things, how to make sure you get, you know, uh, uh, anything damaged to try to get it back. Because the Enigma, they actually got a sunken U-boat and they got this, uh, uh, once again, the Enigma machine here, you can see how complicated it is. If it was in a sunken U-boat, you'd have to figure out how to be able to do this. So Joffrey Tandy was a perfect person to actually start doing this. And that's the story is that the water log in the, in the, um, in the Enigma machine uh, was able to break the Nazi code. They were able, he was able to help them. Um, and also just an interesting fact I thought about this guy uh, was that he was actually friends with the poet, poet T.S. Eliot. Um, and so this is sort of uh, where he, he worked. This is the Natural History Museum. And what's interesting is, is the area over here, as you can see, there's different things that match what's going on inside the, uh, with, inside the, the museum. So you can see the whale and, uh, and the giraffes on, on exhibit. There's also a sort of right here in this corner, there's actually a algae exhibit uh, just like this, it's seaweed. Um, and I actually went there. Um, and interviewed some of the people there. Uh, we're trying to put that up at some point, but the cryptogamic uh, herbarium, this is actually where Joffrey Tandy would have uh, been, maybe. I'm not, I'm not too sure. Nowadays, definitely. Um, and these are just some examples. These are his, uh, this is one of his samples of, of algae that he got in Florida. Um, and so uh, just talking about the, the story, if it was exaggerated, uh, the source of the actual story of, of the typo um, is actually sort of from a, a blog. I, I can add that in at the bottom if you guys want to check it out. Um, he does seem serious. It doesn't seem like he's just making it up, but it, it might not have been a typo, but it is. It seems to be a joke that actually Tandy actually um, said himself. And he was sort of, you know, maybe being humble, downplaying his role um, in, in all of, of what happened in decoding and basically winning World War II. Um, so it's just a good little story about how, if I, you know, you never know as a phycologist what you could be doing. Um, you could be saving the world from Nazis. <laughs>
Um, but it's just very interesting with, uh, with also with kelp jerky is also in uh, SpongeBob. You can see here in kelp jerky, they got kelpos, they got a kelp shake. This is actually Plankton and he's eating kelp chips. Um, and so is life imitating art and uh, is Alga News imitating art? I don't know. Um, so this is sort of art in a way. I, I hope you guys enjoyed our uh, our summer, our beginning of our summer special. I'm sure we'll do other things about summer in the future. Um, just remember, if you enjoy this video, please click like and hit that subscribe and then hit that bell so you can get notifications for the next Algae News where we will, um, I don't even know what we're gonna talk about, but I'm sure we're gonna be talking about something about algae. Um, so I'll see you there on the next episode of Algae News. You keep listening. We'll keep Alka talking. I guess if you keep watching, we'll keep Alka newsing. Keep watching the news. We'll, we'll, we'll get back to you.